Hey guys, welcome back to Pass Money Plan. I'm Alex at Kirby. Uh, today we're going to be reacting to this, which states you will never meet a millionaire who did not learn how to do these three things. So we'll just go step by step. First one is live on far less than you. Wow, I think he worded that weird. Live on far less you than they make. Alex got OCD about words and stuff. He's, he's an English teacher in another life. But um, what he's saying is every millionaire, every millionaire, no matter what element or echelon they're in, they learn to live on less than they make. And right. that's key. Everybody has this assumption, this belief that you get money and then you get money and you blow the bag. You get money and you blow it. You get money and you blow it. And that's the reason why most people are still broke to this day. Uh, I always hear people say when I talk about, you know, saving and investing, they say, oh, I'll save and invest when I make more money. The secret is if you can't if you can't learn how to live on less than you make make it 30,000 a year, you're not going to learn it. If somebody give you another 30,000, you will just find things because the world is set up for you to find ways to spend money It's always no matter how much money you make. It's always a place on earth where you can spend it. So it's, no, it's not this great anomaly out there that's saying, oh, one day I'm make more money than I can spend. The U.S. is $35 trillion in debt. So $35 trillion. If we can find, if people can find ways to spend $35 trillion, million, two million, a billion, a hundred billion, it's a place on this earth where it all can be spent. So if you can't control your finances at a rudimentary level, doing a nine to five job of living on less than you make, then you won't be able to do it when you make more. That's why you see people that win the lottery. They have more money than they ever dreamed of and they go broke. That's why you see athletes. They go from being broke with nothing to having these multi-million dollar contracts. And then within three, three to five years of them retiring or getting out of the league, they're bankrupt because they didn't learn the concept. You have to live on less than you make, no matter what income you have. So it's better to learn it now. So when you start compounding that income, you will still live on less than you make. Yeah, I agree with that. And we talked about this in another video where um, I had mentioned it's easier to start it where you start doing that rather than you know, you're already married and then you guys are in your mid thirties and now you're trying to readjust your lifestyle and come down and then live on less than you make. If once you can begin your financial journey, if you can start learning how to live on, you know, 40, 50, 60% of what you make and save the difference, then you get accustomed to that. And every pay raise is either, you know, goes to savings or it's a small increase on what you could spend for yourself. But you have to get in that habit because it's all habit. It's that's that's really all it is. Um, and it's possible. People will come on here and say that, you know, oh, it's not possible to live on less than you make because of rent, because of all these excuses. But it is. You just have to find the ways to do it. And the people that say that, it's because of rent. We'll use the analogy that you use. It's not, it's your rent is that price because you choose to live that lifestyle. You can choose to live another lifestyle. You can choose to live a less lifestyle. Like people in California, they'd be like, do you know the rent and what it is in California? Well, how about do what Alex did? Why don't you get roommates? Get roommates so you can split the cost. But then, of course, everybody got an ego about themselves. Oh, no, I don't need roommates. I can't live with nobody. Everybody always have an excuse why they can't. And then they have an excuse why they can't do something. And then they want to blame the people who made those sacrifices on the reason why they don't have none. So people need to look in the mirror at themselves to realize that it's them, not the, not the system. It's them. That's the reason why they're there. And like Alex said, it's a this habit for me. You should start at a young age, but... Even if you're married now and, you know, that, you know, younger age has already escaped you, there's nothing wrong with starting today. Start saying, okay, you and your spouse, you know, y'all making, let's say, $60,000, $70,000 a year. Start with something small. Okay, we make $70,000 a year. Let's live on $60,000 a year. Let's live on $50,000 a year. Let's live on $45,000 a year. 
and hold each other to it. And if you do it as a team instead of one person trying to do it and control everything, then you got a highly likely chance, highly likelihood to succeed in this endeavor. That was what you got. Yeah, that's actually what my wife and I did when we first were married, you know, combined, we made 75,000 and we were living on 30, you know, it's, it's possible. You just, like you said, you have to find ways to cut your costs and readjust your lifestyle. It's possible. You know, there are things that I cut back on doing um, so that I could save money. I, like you said, roomed with people. Um, I rented out one of my rooms when I got my house. So there, there's always ways to to cut down expenses. And going on with like renting out rooms and stuff that goes on to, I think the second and third point that this guy made goes hand in hand where it's millionaires grow their income each year and they invest in assets because assets will bring you income. And and to the, the go back on that first point, I think that first point is that's the number one key to you know, getting it to that millionaire levels. And you will hear excuses of people saying, oh, well, I'm a single parent. Okay, even as a single parent, you can make sacrifices. Your kid don't have to go to private school. Your kid don't have to go to all these extra uh, after school activities. But again, it goes back to ego. It goes back to ego for them saying, oh, no, I, I ain't going to make my kid not doing this. This is the only time... You know, they give an excuse on why they have to pay for this, why they have to do this, why they have to do this, why my kid have to be in the latest and greatest name brands, why my kid have to be the most popular person in school. They go through all these exercises, mental exercises to prevent themselves from getting where they want to be. And then 15, 20 years down the road, the kid's at the house and they still there at ground zero wondering what the hell happened. And the thing that they're going to find out is the kid's going to leave and they still don't have anything, but they're going to say the reason why they didn't have it was because of the kid. And then when the kids are gone, they're still not going to have nothing because they never learned the fundamental element of live on less than you make. I think we could do a whole video on just that first point. Um, the second the second and third point, those are great. But the first point is, I mean, it's, it's awesome because it, there's so many things that people don't realize how they can cut back on expenses. People are just so accustomed to spending. Like one big thing I see with people is they have debt on furniture. That is one thing I have never understood. I didn't know. I remember I was, <laughs> this is the funny thing too, is I work at a furniture company and I was talking to you about the sales compared to other companies from what I was hearing. And you were like, yeah, because Rooms to Go does debt. They do like payment plans. I was like, what? That's a thing with furniture. I had no idea. I thought you just paid cash for furniture. Like I, I didn't know people were actually, you know, paying on loans for their bedroom set for their for their living room set, you know. And honestly, me working at a furniture company, I don't even buy from it unless there's a sale, unless there's a deal. Like. And if there's not, I'm going to Walmart and getting a $50 TV stand. You know, I'm not trying to spend all this money on stuff that's going to just break down over time anyway, you know. So it, right. people can really cut back on expenses if they just restrict themselves. I mean, we have the same. I mean, we got I, I don't know if I've mentioned this on this channel, but, um, you know, the coffee table that we have. I'm sorry, not the coffee, the the dining table that we have and the bedroom set we have, you know, I bought it practically brand new from a couple that had bought it, had it for three months and they were selling their house and selling everything. So it was practically brand new for everything for $600, you know, King bed set, dining table, everything. And, you know, there's people that pay, you know, just from knowing what we sell at, um, at work, you know, three, four, five thousand dollars for bedroom sets. It's insane. And people make payment right. on that. You know, people are accustomed to paying on debt, having credit card bills, having loan bills, you know, having car loans. There's so many things that can just be safe that can just be paid for cash if you just save your money. You can save for a four, five, six thousand dollar car. You don't have to take out a loan to get a brand new car. So many people they want cars that are you know, no, no older than five years old. You know, my car was almost as old as me, you know, it was 15 years old and, and I was, it was still going and I drove it until it just 
broke down and then I sold it and then you know from there on but like there are so many ways that you can cut back on costs rather than just thinking that it's necessary to blow your money and let's say we can go on this one forever so we'll go to number two number two is grow your income every year i'll let you start off with this one alex yeah grow your income so that one's important a lot of people seem to believe that you can only have a job and i see people talk about their jobs like or just talk about income in general where oh but i don't make enough at work to do this or to invest find other ways to make income I mean, I started selling antiques. That is like the most unpopular thing in the world, but I figured it out, um, you know, and there's so just especially in today's world where you have eBay, you have Amazon, you have Shopify, you have Etsy, you have Facebook Marketplace. Arbitrage is a real thing. Gary Vee talks about it. It's a very real thing. You can literally go to Goodwill, buy something for five to ten dollars and flip it on ebay for 50 to 150 bucks i've done it it's very possible now is it time consuming yeah it can be but if you're broke would you rather be watching netflix or making more money so that you can get out of your the problem that you're in and that's just mm -hmm. the way i look at it yeah and and it's true and most people like you said they only believe you, they hear this statement, grow your income every year. The first thing they want to complain about is, oh, my job don't give me a pay raise every year or, oh, our pay raises are minimal. No, it's you have 24 hours in the day, 24. You work eight. How can you work eight hours building somebody else's dream and you will work zero hours to build your dream? I mean, like you said, side hustles, real estate, just how about learning the simple mathematics of how your 401k works as you put money in your 401k, your 401k is invested in an instrument. So only thing you have to do is find one instrument outside of your 401k to invest in. And like, you know, we always recommend the same thing Warren Buffett recommends is get something that just mimics the uh, the stock market, S&P 500, SPY, uh, VOO, Total Market Index of U.S. Companies, something like that, something... Very simple and start plugging your money there. At least that appreciation over time will get there. But then there's other avenues. Like Alex, you said, it's a lot of stuff laying around people's houses right now that they can go put it on Facebook Marketplace or one of these offer ups or what have you and sell it to get it out of their house. But people rather cash hoard, I mean, you know, hoard stuff and, you know, it has sentimental value. Sentiment ain't gonna pay the bills. Love ain't gonna pay the bills. Nothing else is gonna pay the bills but cash. So you might as well get rid of that stuff so you can do it. Like me, I'm a minimalist. I don't I don't believe in having extra nothing. I mean, you know, you know, you know my wife, she barely believes in two ply toilet paper because you feel like we're wasting. You know what I mean? It's 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 a that's that's just how that's how it is. And we we do it all the time, like. Move to Europe. You move to Europe. Bought some stuff on uh, marketplace. Used it while we was while we was uh, here, and then sold it before moving to Europe. That's what happened. I mean, but it's not. Oh, we got a great deal. We got to hold on to it. Everything in my in my house is for sale. Everything is for sale. Kids included. If somebody got the right price, it's that's what it is. I, it's always finding that extra lever for like for us. It's you know. Getting another rental property, at least one every year. At least one. That's the goal is get another rental property every year. That brings more income. Looking at adding another business to the portfolio every year to bring more income. And that's just how it goes. And then for the people that the people that say, oh, well, I don't have enough time. How about this? This is another way that you can bring in income every year. How about every year paying off one of those consumer debts? So if you pay in 50, if you used to pay in, you know, $200 a month towards, you know, credit card. You've been paying $200, $250 a month on a credit card year in and year out every month. How about locking in and paying off that credit card so you got an extra $250? That will add income to your lifestyle also. Just get rid of the consumer debt that you have going and stop believing that, oh, I can, you're supposed to have debt. I, I don't know how many times I've heard people say, Oh, well, you know, you, you, you got to have a car payment. No, you don't have to have a car payment. 
I haven't had a car payment since 2000 and 2009. I haven't had a car payment since 2009. And that's just how it goes. It's just, but now all that money you save on car payments, now that's money that's going into your account that can stay in your account to grow, to bring your net worth higher. So every year you should be finding a way to add more money, no matter if it's cutting expenses or coming up with a side hustle to do it. Alex, what you got? Yeah, you should never rely on just your job for income. Like you said, you're building someone else's dreams when you're working at that job. Now, you know, can you take advantage if you have goals? Like Robert Kiyosaki talks about this, where he was the best salesperson at his job so that he could use that money to buy real estate. Yeah, you can do that and move up the ladder so that you can get more money to purchase assets and stuff. But you should never focus on just moving up the ladder. And I remember this was years ago, but you had told me, why would you want to move up the ladder when you can create your own ladder? And I've never I had I had never thought of that. Um, it's not something that I think is taught in society, but it's something that can be done. And moving or creating your own ladder can literally start with, you know, starting your own side hustle with selling arbitrage or doing Uber Eats or whatever, just something that gets you away from your day job and puts you more control of your own income. And then going on to the third point, you know, using that income to invest in assets. Um, you know, the whole point of this channel is passive money, you know, investing in assets that will bring you income that you don't have to actively put work into. Yeah. And um, the third point, like Alice was saying, is, is invest in assets like real estate and low cost index funds. Let me tell you a secret. You're not going to save your way to being a millionaire. You're, it's just not going to happen. I mean, just do a simple exercise. If you're making $70,000 a year and you save 15,000 of it, so that means you live on 45,000 a year. So 55,000 a year, sorry, look at that math. $55,000 a year and you save the other 15,000 and you did it for 45 years straight. That only comes out to $675,000. So you save 15, so people that, Achieving millionaire status, multi-million, decamillionaire status, they realize the one thing, you have to leverage what you have to make more. Uh, the, I'm not going to say the easiest way, but the most common way is real estate. Real estate, you're buying an asset and you letting it appreciate. Low-cost index funds. That's why we always talking about VOO and S&P 500 index fund. Something that's low-cost and it will appreciate compounding that between the 8 to 12% compound rate every year. So that $15,000 that you're saving per year, and then you invest it into a low-cost index fund, that will be millions, multi-millions, 45 years from now. If you're using that $15,000 a year, and let's just say $15,000, so every two years, that's $30,000, you're using that to buy a rental property. That rental property appreciates and you bring in cash flow from the rents that it's bringing in. So over 45 years, that gives you, let's just say you just buy single family homes. That'll give you 20 rental properties. 20 rental properties, 45 years from now, at $1,000 at thousand dollars a month. Let's just say 45 years from now is at $1,000 a month. It's bringing you in $20,000 a month in cash flow or in rent. Now, if you can't live on $20,000 a month, if $20,000 a month is not replacing the income that you have, then shame on you. But that's what it is. So, And in 45 years, you would have paid off all the mortgages, so most of the cash flow would be in your pocket if you just didn't recycle the, recycle the capital or anything like that. But that is what people that are millionaires realize. You can't save your way there. You have to do and leverage other avenues to get there. So, oh, grandma and them advice, oh, Uncle Louie's advice, oh, you just saving and putting in a savings account or put it up under the mattress for a rainy day. Rainy day is going to happen anyway. So you might as well find a way to make that money grow because in the end, at the end of time, when you 35, 40 years old, not 35, 40, 55, 60 years old, and you look in a retirement dead in the face and you ain't got nothing saved up. You're going to be sitting there wondering what the hell happened. But then it's too late. All your income generating years are gone left 
way past behind you. So what do you do now? Now you're hoping you got a kid that like you that you can that can uh you can sleep on a couch or something like that because you just screwed your whole life up and you just wasted 45 years of your life. Alex, I'll get off of this before I start going into my <laughs> going into my rant. All right, guys, with all that being said, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share with your friends, family, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.